1986. The concluding chapter of the first century of Penn State football. It ended auspiciously on the second day of the new year. All-American linebacker Shane Conlon and DJ Dozier, the Lions' number two rusher of all time, helped lift the Nittany Lions to the summit of college football. The Lions got a call from the Commander-in-Chief. So Coach Paterno and all of you, welcome to the White House. Congratulations. God bless you all. 1987, however, was a new season, and new leaders like quarterback Matt Kisner emerged to take the Lions into their second century. Linebacker Keith Karpinski typified the new breed of young Lions. Tailback Blair Thomas had a season of exceptional brilliance, capped by a scintillating performance in a right crucial goal. game against Notre Dame. Get in here. The Nittany Lions of Penn State are going to win it. The Lions' reward a trip to the Magic Kingdom. Main Street of Disney World, a familiar setting. Penn State in a New Year's Day game is almost as familiar. The Lions have been there 14 times. At Epcot Center, the competition heated up as the Lions and Clemson Tigers staged an orange juice squeezing contest. Orlando's Florida Citrus Bowl was the colorful setting for Penn State's 25th postseason bowl appearance and first meeting ever with the Clemson Tigers. Clemson seized the early initiative. The Tigers scored on their opening series to lead 7 to nothing. Early in the second period, Penn State answered. Matt Kisner was picture perfect on a 39-yard throw to Michael Alexander. Almost before the celebration stopped, the Tigers scored again. A six-yard run by Tracy Johnson made it 14-7. The Penn State defense kept Clemson close with big plays like this one by Matt Johnson. Five minutes deep into the third quarter, place kicker Eric Eats, performing in his Florida backyard, brought the Lions to within four. The issue turned early in the fourth quarter. A Clemson interception put the brakes to a Penn State scoring threat that had reached the Tigers' six-yard line. This was not to be the Lions' day. Even disappointment often has a shiny lining. Lions senior Chris Klaus set a Citrus Bowl record with a 51-yard punting average, including this 62-yard monster through the end zone. The offensive line, led by All-American guard Steve Wisniewski, provided excellent protection for Matt Kisner, who was untouched by a Clemson pass rush that had 35 sacks during the season. Freshman tailback Leroy Thompson, number 44, rolled up over 200 all-purpose yards. And Thompson's freshman teammate, Gary Brown, had some impressive numbers of his own against the nation's number two defense. Penn State finished eight and four 
and six seniors went to postseason All-Star games. In the late summer, Joe Paterno paces the practice field as he has for nearly 40 years. With every new season, there are new questions. This preseason would be especially puzzling, with heavy losses from the national championship team and an assortment of troubling injuries. Bowling Green was the opening day opponent. This Rich Dakin to Jeff Davis pass gave Bowling Green an early 7-3 lead. The visitors' impertinence shook the first quarter cobwebs from the Lions' offense. Quarterback Matt Kisner opened a bag of big plays with his 17-yard scoring pitch to Ray Roundtree. John Green announced his presence with a 20-yard touchdown sprint. A Bowling Green punt settled in the arms of Fleet Michael Timpson, who found a wall all the way to the Falcon end zone. Blair Thomas took a screen pass and made a special delivery trip of 67 yards, Penn State's longest pass play of the season. With the offense perking, the defense bid for equal time. Dakin was stripped of the ball, and Quintus McDonald recovered in the end zone to seal Joe Paterno's 200th coaching victory. It was a milestone to be marked. It didn't require 200 wins, however, for all of us to realize that Joe Paterno is something very special. And it certainly does not require my endorsement to proclaim Joe Paterno the best football coach in America. Uh, 200 is nice, but that one's behind us. And I just want to thank all you people who have made my time at Penn State so enjoyable, so worthwhile and made me and my family very happy people to have been able to be part of a wonderful institution, wonderful people, and to represent a great university. And especially am I proud of the fact that I've had an opportunity to work with hundreds and hundreds of just marvelous young people who have enriched my life beyond means. So thank you all, and thank you very much, and let's get on with it now, thank you. Week two, the Alabama Crimson Tide paid a call. Tide halfback Bobby Humphrey delivered a 73-yard thunderbolt in the first quarter. Dame Fortune was clearly courting the Crimson Tide. Clay Whitehurst's two-point conversion pass is not something the coaching staff created. With Kisner temporarily sidelined, sophomore Tom Bill made something happen for the Nittany Lions. Penn State's dreams of a comeback evaporated as Alabama surrounded a Nittany Lions fumble, one of three turnovers forced by the swarming tide. A precision throw is just half of an effective passing game. The other 50% is a sure-handed reception. Ray Roundtree averaged 24.8 yards per reception. 
He caught five touchdown passes in the season's first seven weeks. It didn't require a stopwatch to verify that Michael Timpson's speed is world class. Michael Alexander provided a big target who could catch and run as well. Versatile Jim Coates made a dozen receptions for the Lions. Paul Pumphrey was a consistent contributor with 13 catches. Dependable receivers made the Penn State passing game go and accounted for 1,743 yards. Cincinnati followed Alabama into Beaver Stadium. The Bearcats were banking on gifted quarterback Danny McCoyne. McCoyne wilted beneath a furious pass rush and was finally forced to leave with an injury. Since his successor, Dan O'Brien, found the Lion defense equally ornery. When Joe Paterno nominated 189-pound John Green as the starting fullback, there were some quizzical looks. His 23-yard burst in the second quarter set up the field goal that staked the Lions to a 17-0 lead. Green with room outside. He's he gone. From Roundtree, gets it. 20, 15, 10, 5. He's down short of the goal line. Green, Thomas, the running backs. It is Green into the end zone for the Nittany Lion touchdown. Even with 124 yards rushing, Green could not overshadow the giant redwood of the Lions ground game. Tailback Blair Thomas, here en route to 22 of his team high 154 yards. Freshman Gary Brown left a strong impression with a 36-yard scamper for the Lions' third touchdown. Fresh off a strong showing against Bama, Tom Bill connected with Darrell DeCohen on a 20-yard gain. Lance Lonergan was at the controls on the final scoring march. A 79-yard drive capped by freshman Sam Gash's eight-yard run. On national television at Sullivan Stadium, Penn State got the ball to one of its primetime performers, Blair Thomas. Number 32 took Matt Kisner's screen pass 40 yards to stake the Lions to a 7-0 lead. Kisner threw another dart. This one, 22 yards to tight end Paul Pomfret. Fourth and two. The call goes out for Thomas. Thomas. Tries to get outside. If he can, he's got a first down. He's inside the 10, the 5. He scores. Blair Thomas breaks it all the way from the 17-yard line. The Nittany Lions have scored again. Boston College trailed, but the Eagles were about to take wing. Tom Waddle's exceptional catch got the host back in the fight. Mike Power and Darren Flutie collaborated on two scoring passes, including this one of 40 yards to pull even at 17 all. Power ran out for the Eagles, however, as Dwayne Downing intercepted at the Boston College 42. John Green ducked behind the block of number 89, Bob Roscoe, to restore the Lions' lead. Pressure is not new to the Penn State defense. Pete Kirkendall deflected a pass at the line of scrimmage. And sacked power for a 10-yard loss. Boston College's final flash of offense was extinguished by Kirkendall and linebacker Keith Karpinski. On fourth down, the call goes out for the kicker. 
Penn State has had responses from many men with talented toes. In a pressure situation against Boston College, Eric Eats was equal to the task with a 46-yard effort, the longest of his career to give the Lions a late three-point lead. Ray Tarassi filled in ably when Eats was injured, here hitting a 33-yarder versus West Virginia. Tarassi also kept returners loose with his elusive kickoffs. Chris Klaus, number 96, answered all questions about an uncertain punting game with a 40-yard average and this 76-yard rocket against Rutgers, the second longest punt in Penn State history. Eastern Independent Temple traded field goals with the Lions in the first quarter, but the Owls got the short end of the deal over the final 45 minutes. Kisner stretched the field with a 41-yard pitch to Timpson, who made a major league adjustment on the ball. Exemplary blocking gave Thomas an uncluttered path to the end zone. Thomas wasted little time motoring 45 yards to a second touchdown, weaving an acrobatic tightrope down the sideline. With 150 yards versus the Owls, Thomas made it 485 yards in three weeks, a total bettered only by Lions Heisman winner, John Capaletti. The Owls' attack was beached by defensive plays like this Kirkendall sack. Eddie Johnson's interception. and the jarring hits of linebacker Darrell Washington, who had a season-high 14 tackles against Temple. Homecoming. The traditional parade. The blue band. Cheerleaders, bears, and sharks. And in crepe paper, a familiar face. If the play won't work as design, Blair Thomas is a master at improvisation. Rutgers defense this rushing selection, but Blair swings to the backside and finds no one home. Senior linebackers Kirk Bernier and Pete Giftopoulos bottle up Henry Henderson of the Scarlet Knights. Quarterback Kistner hits season highs for completions and passing yards with rifle throws like this touchdown pass to Roundtree. Brian Chismar blunted Rutgers' efforts to dampen homecoming with two interceptions of Scarlet quarterback Scott Ernie. Syracuse charged into a sold-out carrier dome, undefeated and untied. A frenzied crowd was ready for an end to the Lions' 16-game winning streak. The fireworks started early. Looks long down the middle. He's got a man open. At the 30-yard line, he's got it. Headed to the end zone is Rob Moore. First play of the game. Touchdown, Syracuse. The Orange's early success was catchy. Blair Thomas found nowhere to run on this short flip from Kisner. Quarterback Don McPherson went airborne once more. Receiver Tommy Kane proved part contortionist on this 29-yard touchdown. 
Tailback Gary Brown showed the Lions were still full of fight with his 80-yard touchdown bolt, the longest run of the season by a Penn State back. Defensive tackle Rich Schoenwolf got his paw on a Syracuse punt and chased it the length of the field for another Penn State score. Backup Tom Bill spotted Ray Roundtree running free in the Syracuse secondary. He zigzagged his way through Orange defenders for a 59-yard scoring play. Syracuse's big early lead, however, was too much to overcome. Backyard rival West Virginia paid a call in week eight. Thomas provided legs for the Lions' first scoring drive with his 21-yard burst off a draw play. Inside the Mountaineer 5, Green would not be denied. West Virginia's officer in charge, Major Harris, got the visitors even with a three-yard rollout for the tying touchdown. Leading 10-7 in the third period, Kisner went upstairs. Chris Herring of West Virginia wound up as the unintended receiver. Harris capitalized on the turnover for a 14-10 West Virginia lead with a short scoring pass to Keith Wynn, and the Mountaineers were not finished. Smith, the man in motion. Exactly where he's going. Harris looks for all of it down the middle. Got him, tally, touchdown, West Virginia. A 30-yard strike, and the Mountaineers have taken control here in Beaver Stadium. Leroy Thompson's kickoff returns, including this one of 28 yards, were pivotal to the Penn State comeback. Kistner and Alexander made the sideline pattern work for 21 yards to the West Virginia 20. A draw by Thomas brought the Lions 16 yards closer to touchdown territory. From the one-yard line, Thomas went Blairborn to narrow the gap. Pressure was building on the West Virginia offense and the Penn State defense. Scott Gobb hauled down A.B. Brown after a two-yard run, and the Lions stayed alert for the unexpected. With the football, at the 32, Curtis McDonald made the tackle. A suffocating defense left the Mountaineers' Harris nowhere to run to and nowhere to throw. Sensing a big finish, the Beaver Stadium crowd roared its approval. Thomas, who wound up with 181 yards rushing, led the Lions deep into West Virginia territory, and a face mask penalty took the ball even deeper. Reserve tailback Gary Brown put the finishing touches on Penn State's remarkable comeback with this slashing 19-yard trip that triggered a wild end zone celebration. With two minutes still to play, Harris attempted to rally his troops from behind. But an interception by Gary Wilkerson and another on the final play by Marcus Henderson spelled disappointment for the Mountaineers. Offensive linemen toil in anonymity. All-America guard Steve Wisniewski's day's work includes providing pass protection for Kisner, or clearing a running lane for Gary Brown. Center Roger Duffy, number 78.
and guard Rich Cousy create daylight for Blair Thomas on this big gainer versus West Virginia. Tackle Stan Clayton and guard Mark Sickler, number 50, provide an end zone escort for John Green. The offensive line, a crucial element in the success of any football team. Memorial Stadium in Baltimore was filled to capacity for the Lions' Week 9 meeting with a fired-up Terrapins of first-year coach Joe Krivak. Maryland dominated the early action, leading 6-0 on a pair of field goals by Dan Flocky. Quarterback Neil O'Donnell had designs on further exploiting the Lions' pass defense. First half so far for O'Donnell, this time a straight block. Look, looks for Edmonds up in front, making the interception. Down the sidelines comes Downing. Downing tied it perfectly, still on his feet. He's got a chance to get in the end zone. To the far side, he's at the 15, the 10, dances inside the 5, still on his feet. Touchdown, Penn State! They give a running back. That was a great interception. There's a kid who's been waiting and waiting to do his thing. And when he got a chance, he really did. Penn State's halftime adjustments paid dividends on the opening drive of the third period. Kisner got the ball to a wide open Mike Alexander, and the senior wideout turned a short pass into a long gainer. Off rollout action, Kisner found Paul Pumphrey in the end zone, and Penn State's lead ballooned from one to eight points. Alexander's versatility was a migraine for the Terps defense, which finally chased him down after a 15-yard run on the reverse. The quick pitch to Blair Thomas was the perfect call against the Terrapin defensive front that got only a glimpse of the blur wearing number 32. Thomas' 58-yard touchdown sprint increased the Penn State lead to 21-6. Senior Dan Henning's passing pumped new life into the Terrapin offense. This pinpoint throw pulled Maryland to within five, with five minutes still to play. More than two minutes remained, and Henning aimed to use it to Maryland's advantage. Pressure from Lions Keith Karpinski and Rich Schoenwolf forced the Terp quarterback to throw a panicky pass, picked off by Pete Giftopoulos. Penn State escaped with a 21-16 victory. For the first time in 16 years, the pit game was not the regular season finale for Penn State. Panther quarterback Darnell Dickerson directed an early threat that was short-circuited by linebacker Keith Karpinski, whose pass defense forced Pitt to settle for a field goal. When Dickerson tried to throw the ball out of his own end zone, Willie Thomas stripped the ball, and Pete Giftopoulos recovered to create a scoring opportunity for the Lions. Ray Tarassi's field goal attempt was rejected by Gary Richard, who came free on a big rush that preserved Pitt's slender lead. The clock was moving towards zero when Billy Owens stepped in front of a Kisner pass and returned it 69 yards to seal the Pitt victory. The Panthers' win was their first over Penn State at Pitt Stadium in more than 20 years. The defense that kept Pitt out of the end zone would come back to preserve a Penn State victory in the final game of the season. Stout defense is a hallmark of the Nittany Lions, stuffing the run, collapsing the pocket, sacking the quarterback, forcing turnovers, all in the day's work for Penn State defenders.
Sixth-ranked Notre Dame figured to be a formidable test for a Penn State team still smarting from a loss at Pitt the previous week. The Lions roll the dice in the first period. A surprise punt on third down deprived Notre Dame of the opportunity to get ace returner Tim Brown on the field. The move paid off handsomely when Brian Chismar recovered at the Notre Dame 19. 35 yarder with the win and the Lions hit the ball. Now that's a great strategic call by Joe Paterno. John Green ended a two-play touchdown drive with his 10-yard run through the heart of the Irish defense. After Notre Dame tied it at 7-7, Thomas put the Lions back in command with a short but rewarding run. As halftime approached, the Irish were on the doorstep of the Lions' end zone. Brian Chismar yanked the welcome mat with his interception. An elusive Tony Rice made the option work for an Irish touchdown that pulled the visitors even at 14-all. Into the teeth of a cold November wind, Kisner mounted a march for the go-ahead touchdown. He hit Brown for six yards. And found Coates for nine more. Blair Thomas, en route to a career 214 rushing yards, waltzed his way inside the Notre Dame 40. Kisner and Paul Pomfret connected on a key fourth down pass, and Thomas took personal charge. The screen, coach goes in motion. Thomas, 20, works his way to the 16 yard line. Thomas, first down, 10 yard line. Blair Thomas with the football at the five, the three yard line. A long drive for Penn State against the wind. Second down and two out of the power eye in the two tight end formation. Green falls to the one. Touchdown. John Green squeezed across the goal line. The Nittany Lions regain the lead. Notre Dame refused to go quietly. Mark Green's 13 yard run had the Irish knocking at the Lions 17. A keeper by Tony Rice set up a big fourth and one. Brown, Johnson, and Green all line up behind Rice. Fourth down play, Notre Dame. First down. Anthony Johnson plowed over to pull the Irish within one. Notre Dame quickly made its decision to go for two. What play to run? What defense to call? Critical choices confronted the generals on both sides. This is for the ball game. Rice rolls. He's not going to get in there. He's dropped at the five-yard line. The Nittany Lions of Penn State. Star of the Notre Dame game was tailback Blair Thomas. The Irish, however, were not the only opponent Thomas tormented. En route to 1,414 yards, Thomas displayed multiple rushing personalities. He was quick to the hole and fleet in the open field. He showed imagination. He leaped, he fainted, he ran with power. He was a package of shifty moves, a purveyor of accentuated acceleration.
Mom appreciated it, but to enemy defenses, it constituted a knockout punch. Now into its second century, the future of Penn State football is secured by a galaxy of bright young stars. The Nittany Lions have been challenged and have been champions. They have always played with boundless energy and an exceptional sense of determination and purpose. has its reward. At Penn State, that philosophy has been reinforced from season to season, from game to game, from play to play. Penn State football, a century old, but still vibrant, still growing, still with a firm focus on goals worth setting and achieving. Penn State, where football and excellence have become interchangeable. The Nittany Lions Hall of Fame is filled with symbols of success. All-American photographs and plaques, academic achievements, national championships, and the Heisman Trophy, college football's most coveted individual prize. In 1988, what the Nittany Lions had in abundance was enthusiasm, commitment, and resolve. They also had more than their fair share of misfortune. But the shadows of disappointment never obscured the pride this young squad had in itself, its coaching staff, and the football tradition of its university. Now, the Lions look to the future and have accepted the challenge of putting Penn State football back in the hunt for national honors. State came pouring out of the chute to the welcoming roar of its loyal fans who filled Beaver Stadium to its capacity every Saturday. For the 1988 Lions, turning expectations into reality was a difficult task, but an experience that produced a positive foundation for the future. The encouraging thing is that 
we found out a lot about the young people we have. They have loyalty. Uh, they, they have a commitment to this tradition because they never quit trying. And uh, I feel really good about them as we look to the future. The key to Penn State's immediate future is a core of young players who gained valuable experience during a 1988 season that began on a Saturday night in Virginia. The Young Lions open strong, taking their initial drive 61 yards, climaxed by sophomore fullback Sam Gash's dive into the end zone. On the ensuing kickoff, a monster hit by Andre Collins forced a fumble, recovered by Darren Perry. Gary Brown quickly pushed the Penn State advantage to 14 points. When an alert Eddie Johnson intercepted a Virginia pass, the Lions immediately struck again, this time through the air. And Tom Bill appeared to be settling in as the quarterback to guide Joe Paterno's multiple offense. When the running game is going good, you know, it makes the, it opens the passing game up. So if we can keep the running game going, I think then, you know, the, pass, the passing game will go along with it. First and 10 at the 20-yard line. Draw play to Brown again. He's at the 15. Brown to the 10. Still going to the 5. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown. Gary Brown. A 20-yard run. Passes Bill, looking, has everybody out in the pattern. He throws, has a man wide open at the midfield stripe. It's Odell Wilson. He spins and is still going. Down to the 40 and down to the 35-yard line. Ball is right on the 20, and Tom Bill is going to put it up. He's looking, throwing into the end zone. This one is caught for a touchdown by Gary Brown. Penn State's attack continued to light the scoreboard, including the second touchdown of the night from Sam Gash. We had practiced it and uh, practice the goal line plays and everything. And I would go in on goal line and mainly block. I thought I was going to be blocking and let the tailback take it around, but they gave it to me and I scored. And I was like, God, that was easy. <laughs> when Boston College arrived for the Lions' home opener, the Eagles had an air game in mind, but hero back Brian Chismar had other ideas. Tailback Gary Brown, fresh from a three-touchdown show at Virginia, left Eagles missing on this 43-yard dash to the end zone. Brown's sophomore partner at tailback, Leroy Thompson, followed John Green's block to power a Penn State drive. Thompson contributed 56 yards to the Lions' attack. second straight week, fullback Sam Gash was Penn State's designated scorer. With the game tied at 20 all, the situation called for a big play by the Gritty Lions. Low, under good pressure, they block the kick. It'll go out of bounds inside the 30-yard line at the 27. Eddie Johnson got it, and the Nittany Lions have a chance with a minute and 46 seconds to play. Joe Markowitz will hold it. The snap is good, the ball is down, the kick is up, it's long enough, is it good enough? It is, Penn State has the lead with 48 seconds to play in the game. Eastern rival Rutgers pressured quarterback Tom Bill's passing plans, sending the junior signal caller to the sidelines for the remainder of the season with a dislocated kneecap. And when a last-second end zone pass misfired by inches, the Lions absorbed their first setback of 1988. Against Temple a week later, Penn State turned up the defensive intensity a notch, allowing the Owls just 13 net yards on the ground. While Temple runners found every avenue a dead end, Penn State's rushing corps collected a season-high 250 yards. New Jersey native Sean Redmond danced through the defense for the best rushing numbers of his career. John Green ran with authority from his fullback slot. And Leroy Thompson cracked into the end zone for one of three touchdowns on the ground. 
Penn State specialty teams got into the act as well. Andre Collins split the protection to block a temple punt, and Willie Thomas, number 25, scooped up the loose ball for a sprint to six points. Young quarterback Tony Saka spotted Michael Timpson running free in the Owl secondary and hit him in full stride. A 60-yard touchdown that was the longest reception of Timpson's Penn State career. It was just an excellent pass. It was an excellent pass. I mean, I had nothing else to do but to run with the football once it was there. It was, uh, you know, he threw it right behind the, uh, right behind the free safety's ear. And uh, it was just free sailing from there. It was just out in the open, just go. The flying feet of Timpson and the accurate arm of Saka plundered the Temple secondary and provided a glimpse of the weapons in the Nittany Lions aerial arsenal. The first true freshman to start at quarterback under Joe Paterno, Saka kept the Temple secondary off balance with his clever footwork. The threat of Saka running freed receivers like tight end Dave Jacob. Here we go. Saka fakes, throws into the end zone. It's complete to Dave Jacob for a touchdown. Tailback Gary Brown's 57-yard scoring run put the finishing touches on the Lions' biggest offensive explosion of the season. State impressed a veteran stadium sellout crowd by rolling up 371 yards and 45 points en route to victory number three. The defense also established the tempo for Penn State's homecoming game with Cincinnati. The Bearcats tried each page in their playbook and came up empty. Penn State's active defense had an answer for every threat. Big play set the tempo as cornerback Willie Thomas entered his name in the scoring summary for the second straight week. And sprinter Michael Timpson turned distance runner with a 64-yard punt return. Michael Timpson is deep, nice, high kick. Timpson back inside his own 40, takes it at the 36, right up the middle, breaks it back at the 50. The 40, he can break it all the way as he goes outside. 25, 20, he's down to the 10, the 5, and he scores. Michael Timpson all the way for a Penn State touchdown. Daniels left, the fake to the tailback. Saka looks for the tight end, he's got it at the 5, turns it upfield. Tight ropes in for a touchdown. David Jacob scores the touchdown. It was man-to-man -man coverage, and uh, I just sort of beat my man across the field. And uh, Tony threw a really good pass, you know, right in my hands, and uh, I tried to keep myself from going out of bounds. And I sort of scooted into the corner of the end zone there. Leroy Thompson's 11-yard touchdown run was the last salvo in a 28-point second quarter barrage. The final count of 35 to 9 left the Lions with a record of 4 and 1. The prosperity of the moment, though, was fleeting. On successive Saturdays, the Nittany Lions encountered Syracuse, Alabama, and West Virginia, all top 20 teams. Infractions, inexperience, and injuries were magnified for a squad that never lost its fight. If a season turns on one play, it was easy to find on a cloudless day in Birmingham, Alabama. I think the Alabama game was a game that really turned the tide as far as the season would go, and I, I could almost literally put it down to one play, the long touchdown pass that Saka hit Timpson on that they called back. We had a chance if we could come out of the Alabama game with a win, I think, to have a pretty good season. But uh, when we came back home after that one, we, we never quite got to be a good, where I thought we could be. The Lions re-established their reputation for power football in the annual meeting with Maryland. High-stepping Sean Redman terrorized the Terrapins behind blocks from linemen like number 66, All-American Steve Wisniewski. The success of Penn State's running made the Terps perfect targets for another big play. Lonegan straight back. Now fades, hits green on a screen play. He's got it to 25, the 30, right down the middle of the 40. He could break it. 50, 40. He's on the move at the 30, the 25, the 20, the 10. He will score for Penn State. 
first turned around for the screen, I could feel the, the defensive end give me some pressure on my, on my back. I could just sense he was there. And Lance just did a good job of throwing the ball to the inside where he led me away from the, uh, away from the defensive end. After that, I just turned up field. I got some beautiful blocks by my lineman. I made a, a, a slight cut back to the inside and uh, tried to turn on the speed. Green's 79-yard journey ranked sixth on Penn State's list of longest completions. Defenders Scott Gobb, Rich Schoenwolf, and Frank Giannetti tormented a Maryland offense that was limited to a third period touchdown. With a score tied at 10, it was crunch time for the Penn State offense. Senior quarterback Lance Lonergan and wide receiver Dave Daniels sparked the effort with a 45-yard completion. With 102 yards for his biggest day of the season, Gary Brown climaxed the 74-yard clutch drive that gave the Lions their 24th consecutive triumph over Maryland. In the final two weeks of 1988, effort and enthusiasm remained consistent, but failed to produce results. Resolve and determination emerged from disappointment. We stood on the sideline at the, as the Notre Dame game wound down, and I was with some of the underclassmen, and we said, hey, no more of this, coach. And I said, absolutely no more of this. And uh, I don't think there's a lack of commitment or effort or, or confidence that we're not going to get back where we belong. Assembling a successful football team is a complex task. In a sport where 11 individuals function as a single unit, tedious repetitions on the practice field are essential to precision on the playing field. Good chance. Young team, got a lot of experienced players now coming back for this next year. We'll still be young next year, but I can say we'll have that experience and we'll know how to win the big game. I think this year we had a couple of close big games that we just couldn't seem to win, but I think we'll have that edge on a lot of people next year, and I believe, we, I believe we're going to be back. We're going to be in contention once again. Penn State's reputation for awesome defense is respected by everyone who knows college football. The Nittany Lions will battle you eyeball to eyeball. They attack the quarterback from outside in and inside out. They chase, they pursue. And as defensive tackle Rich Schoenwolf recounts, they burn with a special pride. I kind of feel personal. We let down a lot of the great athletes that came through here. And that's something that I'm going to try as hard as I can between now and the start of next season to make sure that doesn't happen again. Young players like Willie Thomas, number 25, and Darren Perry, number 9, blend their defensive skills with veteran Sherrod Range, number 36, to create an umbrella against enemy passes. The assignment awaiting the 1989 Nittany Lions is significant. The schedule includes four teams that played in postseason bowl games a year ago. Against such prominent foes, the latest in the long line of gifted Penn State linebackers will be tested. Defensive co-captain Andre Collins, number 31, knows that being a Lion linebacker carries a special responsibility. Now we have all the linebackers here have a lot of pride, you know. We're always young and bad linebacker. Yeah, we just have a lot of pride and everyone wants to be a linebacker here. You know, you walk around somewhat cocky, you know, and you're expected to do well, and the other team gives you a lot of respect. The return of quarterback Tom Bill and big play receiver Dave Daniels, who averaged 20 yards per catch in 1988, fuels optimism for an explosive Penn State offense. Tight end Dave Jacob, the only receiver to catch a pass in every game, is back, as is Tony Saka whose gutty performance as a freshman quarterback earned the respect of his teammates and the coaching staff. Few schools run the football with more proficiency than Penn State. Whether banging inside or sweeping outside, 
there are many talented runners to whom the Lions can turn. Sam Gash. Leroy Thompson. Sean Redmond. And last year's leading rusher, Gary Brown. Penn State's offense will receive a giant lift with the return of sensational tailback Blair Thomas. A runner in the same company of Lion greats, Lenny Moore, Charlie Pittman, Lydell Mitchell, Franco Harris, John Capaletti, Kurt Warner, and DJ Dozier. Thomas sat out 1988 with a knee injury. It was very tough for me not to, you know, go out there and perform each week. You know, the year before that, I was used to going out there getting myself mentally prepared, you know, for the games. And this year, I was just out there really, you know, trying to motivate the guys to do the best they can. It's tight enough! For Thomas, last season was a frustrating time of cheering and working. If you said hard work and then multiplied it by 10 times and doubled it, you may get some idea how hard that, that young man has worked to get himself back to, to where he was before he was injured. Unless you know him, unless you see him working, unless you go through a workout with him, you, it's hard to describe just, just what he's done. And, and he's got a great mental approach to it. He's created a tremendous amount of emotion in us because of the way he's handled his problem. 39 lettermen are back from the 1988 Penn State team. Each one dedicated to writing a positive finish to a decade in which the Nittany Lions played in three national title games and have two national championship rings to show for it. Two-time All-American Steve Wisniewski and decorated defensive back Eddie Johnson are among the regulars who must be replaced. But ready to step forward are athletic young men who are resolute, dedicated, talented, and have their target in precise focus. As with all the young men who wear the blue and white, their goal is number one. And these athletes and their coaches have accepted the challenge. Came in as a freshman, we won the national championship. This is my last year. I want to leave with another ring on my finger. We want to be 11-0. We want to play for the national championship. We feel this year, you know, we have experience. I think we'll, we'll be back on top. I think we'll... Uh... We'll start winning the big game again, and, uh, just like Penn State used to. Keep one thing in mind, we, we're going to get better every time we, we do something. And concentrate on getting ourselves good enough that eventually we're going to be able to have a chance to win a national championship again. Oh!